Welcome back. This is part four of our platformer game project, and we've finally gotten to the one you've all been waiting for. Uh, we're going to make our character jump. So we have our game uh, right now where we have our sprite with gravity that acts on it that can run back and forth, and we can stand on platforms. And that's good, but now we want to talk about jumping. So what I've done um, since the last time, um, I did go ahead and I went over here and I added uh, a variable here for player gravity in our settings so that in our player sprite we can just use that here instead of putting the number. Um, that way those of you who want to adjust gravity, make your make the gravity in your game different, bigger or smaller, um, you can just change that value right here. Okay, so, so how are we going to do jumping? Well, at this point is when I always get lots of questions about uh, things like double jumping and um, and wall jumping and all that kind of stuff. But and we'll we'll get to that. But uh, for right now, I just want to talk about the very simple jumping where you press a key and you jump. In this case, the space bar. Now, we don't really want to do it the way we did the keys because we don't want to jump as long as we're holding it down. Right? That would be flying, not jumping. Right? If we had pressing the space bar accelerated us in the negative y direction. That would be like a, a jetpack game or a or it would be a good way to do a lunar lander kind of game where you launch your rocket and you thrust upwards and then um, when you're coming down you want to thrust again to, to slow down and, and, and land gently. Uh, but that's flying, not jumping. So what we want to do is we want to go over to our game uh, events section and add a an event for the key press, uh, for the key down. So we want to look for the pg.keydown event. And the and the key that we want to look for is pg.kspace. And if that happens, we're going to say player.jump. Uh, All right. Now what do we need to do in player.jump? Well, over here in our player, when we define jump, couple things we could do. Well, we could just say we could just say jump means self.vel.y equals negative uh, 20 or something like that, right? And that gives us an upward speed. And that's fine. That will make us go upwards. But the problem is that it's going to do it whenever we hit space. So if I go over here and run the game, you can see um, Whenever I hit space, I jump, right? So I can keep hitting it and go higher, um, which is fine if you're making Flappy Bird or something, um, where flapping makes you go up, gravity makes you go down. Uh, this is not much of a platform game because we never we could just run around and never land on anything. Okay, so here's what we want. So what we want to do is we only want to be able to jump if we're standing on something, right? And how do we tell we're standing on something? Well. We're saying on something if there's something below us. So if we just look one pixel below where our sprite is, see if we if there's a platform there, meaning see if we collide with a platform, then we know we're standing on something and we're allowed to jump. So that means in here we need to check to see if we're standing on something, right? I'm going to go ahead and put that here. Jump only if standing on a platform, okay? So we need to be able to check the platforms, but the player sprite doesn't know anything about the platforms. Player sprite doesn't know they exist. So what we can do is over in our game loop, when we spawn the player, we can basically send the player, it's called a reference, we send it a link to the game, and then it knows all about all the game's variables, including this platforms group, right? So when our player spawns, it knows about the game, and we can say self.game equals game. And now the player has a essentially a copy of the game. It's not really a copy, it's a reference, but um, it knows about everything that's part of the game. And that means that we can go right here and do that collision. So we want to look underneath us. So we want to take the rectangle of the of the player, right? add one to it. So one one pixel lower. We do our collision. Just like we've done before. 
right? We collide ourself with the self.game.platforms, still false. And then we don't really want to be inside the inside the platform. So we move the rect right back up again. And so this happens right away. So it's, you're never going to actually see this because there's no drawing or updating happening between these two commands. So all we're doing is just shifting it down temporarily to see if there's anything below us. If there is, then we can jump. OK, so let's see how that looks. Let's go over here, run our game. And there we go. OK, so that's much better. So you can see if I'm if I hit space again while I'm in the air, nothing happens right until I land back on the platform. Then I can jump again. All right. Very cool. I can jump around. It's already lots of fun. I can jump around. Ah, except now we see something strange, right? When I jump, so I'm snapping to the top of this platform, right? If you think about how we did the platform collisions for falling, um, it'll be kind of obvious why it's doing that, right? We start jumping up, and then as soon as we touch a platform, we're instantly snapping to the top of it and setting our velocity to zero. So that's not good, right? We don't want that to happen. And for this game, since I'm thinking about doing this as sort of a, if you're familiar with doodle jump, kind of game. Um, I do want to be able to jump up through the platforms. I just don't want to snap to them like this. So I want to be able to jump up and then land on it. So I actually only want to land on things when I am going downwards, not any time. So in our update right here, we're just checking all the time to see if we hit a platform. All right, this is the part I should have labeled this last time. Uh, check if player hits uh, hits a platform only if falling, right? So only if falling. So how do we tell we're falling? Well, it means our velocity is downwards or greater than zero. So if player dot x, the x of the player, or sorry, the y of the player, not the x, is greater than zero, okay, then we can do all of this stuff but not if it's not, okay? So that's gonna look more like this, okay? So I still jump like I did, but if I'm underneath it, I jump up and land on it, okay? So that's much more doodle jumpy and works the way we want it to for the game that we're gonna be making. Now, obviously there are lots of other ways we could do this. Um, sometimes in a game you don't want to uh, jump to the top of it, right? Or be able to jump through it. You would want jumping up like this to stop you when your head hit the platform. Um, and if you come in from the side right now, we have a thing where if we come in from the side, we're going to land on the top um, because we're only really looking at the top. Um, now that's fine for this game. Um, to do collisions in all four directions, to a platform is a little more complicated in the code. So I'm going to hold off before we add that until we've explored a little bit more of how to get this simple doodle jump style game working. Then we can talk a little bit more about how, um, how we're going to make something more advanced work. OK, so try that out. Um, you can go ahead and add some more platforms if you want, although I think we have, I'll take a few more minutes to, to talk about a simpler way to add more platforms without adding them uh, one at a time like we're doing, uh, like we're doing here. So what I want to do is just set up a list of the platforms that I want uh, on the screen when it starts, kind of like the, the start screen, okay? And I'm going to go over here and I'm going to add that to our settings. Platform, or we'll call this starting platforms. So we're going to do other things with the platforms later, OK? So let's just call it the platform list, OK? And this is just going to be a list of a bunch of platform coordinates, right? Now, I know the first two that I want to do. I want to do this one, right? Because I want to make the, the one that's on the ground, OK? And then I'm going to do a comma, and I'm going to do, I'll just go ahead and do this second one, right? That's a good one to do. And then we could add a few more. Now you can play around. There's different ways you could do 
where you want to put them. Just remember that it's, it's the first number is the x, right? So the second number is the y. So like you could do something like height minus 350, and that would be 350 pixels from the bottom. Um, the width of the platform and the and the uh, thickness of the platform. Okay, and I'll do a couple more just so I have a good assortment of. Uh, platforms on the screen. You can play around with these numbers, uh, put them in different places. Um, you know, obviously, if you wanted a smaller platform, I'm doing them all at 100. We could do this one could be a nice skinny one, right? But regardless, then I have a list of one, two, three, four, five platforms that are going to show up on the screen uh, at the start of the game. Okay, so once I have that list, that's just a list of you know sets of four numbers that I'm going to use to create each platform. So over here, instead of all of this, we're going to do a loop and just loop through. We're going to loop through this list and use the first entry in the list is this set of four, second one, third one, right? And then we'll just make each one. So I'm going to say for, let's call it a plat for short. That's another little abbreviation I like to use for platforms in uh, platform list. Okay, so for each one of those, I want to make a platform. So let's just call it P platform, right? And then we know we'd have to put the four numbers. Now, now there's two ways we can do this. We could say uh, plat zero, right? Plat one, plat two, and plat three, right? And that would do the the zero, the one, the two, and the three item in the list. But there's a shortcut for that. If you want to take a list and break it up into all of its pieces, just like we're doing here. That's also called exploding the list. So in Python, we just say star plat, right? The star stands for explode in this case. So take the plat, take that list and explode it into its four components. And then we have a platform. And we just add the platform, oops, the platform to the all sprites list and to the platforms list, right? And that's a lot less, uh, that's a lot less verbose than doing it all one at a time. And then if you want to change them, you can go over and change those coordinates. Let's see what that looks like. All right, there we go. Now I've got some different platforms that I can jump to um, and bounce around the screen. And you can play around with that. You can do fun stuff like jumping off the side and landing on another one. That's going to be a good strategy, maybe. Um, Okay, and so we'll stop there for now. Uh, play around with how it works. Try changing some of those settings, right? That's why we that's why we put them in the settings uh, file here. And what I recommend you do, though, is just make sure you have, for moving forward, make sure you have not too many platforms, but not too few, um, and a good spread of them so that you can get up to the top of the screen. Because next video, we'll start talking about how are we going to scroll the, scroll the screen when we get up near the top or move the camera if you like to look at it that way. How are we going to keep going higher and get to more platforms? All right, thanks. I'll see you next time.